All right, this week's throwdown is a 12-minute AMRAP. 60 toes to bar, 50 bar facing burpees, 40 deadlifts at 225, 155, and then 30 strict handstand push-ups. If you finish a round, it's an AMRAP, so you just go back to the top, start back over. It's 180 total reps, so once you get your score in, just count it all up. If you don't finish a round, you can count from there, okay? Let's go through the standards. Toe to bar, normal standard, feet behind the bar. Both feet must touch the bar at the same time. 50 bar facing burpees, you're allowed to step these up and step these back, but you have to jump with two feet and land with two feet. So don't do what Mike does and land with one feet, right Mike? Oh, <laughs> that's, I'm the one that actually does that. <laughs> the deadlifts, no bouncing. So make sure your arms stay straight. <laughs> Calling them out. <laughs> make, sure, make sure your arms stay straight. And if you, when you're going down, it can hit the ground hard, but there is no bouncing it off of it. Does everybody understand that whole standard? Because I know that gets no arm bend when it's coming up. For the strict handstand push-ups, we're going back to the 2017 standard. So I'm going to have Mia, Mia demo this. We're going to go over to the wall real quick. So she's going to stand up. Feet are underneath her hips. Feet against the walls. Thumbs are touching overhead. You can't pull your scap down, so just press up, right? None of that, no cheating. You're gonna take a chalk mark and measure it at the wrist. So, well, the chalk broke, not ideal. But then from that chalk mark, I'm gonna measure down three inches, so then where my finger is would be where your feet can have to pass each time. And there is a 36 inch box by 24 inches out. The hand placement on this, so if she's, can you turn this way? Fingers can touch the line, but palms cannot. That's really the only standard. Obviously, you gotta lock out each rep, and make sure your feet are over. Yeah! It's just oh. so lame. Oh. <laughs> it's so bad. We did this workout on Saturday. We're filming it on a Tuesday, and my abs are still sore. I'm not because I'm resilient. That's probably because I did 45 more toes <laughs> bar than you. Maybe. But no big deal. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. My name's Brandon Dorman. I'm Max El Haj. Remember, this episode is brought to you by The Design, our online training program. You can follow it for free at trainingthinktank.com or follow the Instagram handle TTTDSGN. If you guys are new to this series, this is where we announce a qualifier style workout every single Thursday for you guys to do with our community. We do it ahead of time so that we can give you a demo, some tips, some strategy, and some scores to go after. This week's demo is Joey Schweck. My boy. Let's jump into it. All right, after the demo, stick around. We're gonna give you some scores and some actionable tips that you can use for this workout. And if you don't know Joey, he's about a sanctional level athlete. He was on our team at regionals and also at the Dubai CrossFit Championship. Yeah, so he's a, a really good athlete, uh, probably a little bit more enduring than strong. You'll see that yeah. a little bit in this Better workout. At gymnastics. Yes, um, so he did a lot this week. That's kind of a preface. He's doing all the games workouts, so he tested over half of them oh, wow. the week before. He did Mary and the sled sprint the day before this, so he's like, man, my lats are blown up. Um, so that, that's a little preface before you kind of see him, especially you'll notice on the handstand push-ups, he kind of blows up. But what he open with there? So he said he was going to do tens across. I think that, you know, and we'll talk about this in some of the bullet points later on, but I think there's a couple different options here. For him, I actually would have suggested to go a bigger set. I mean, he could do 40 unbroken toes to bar. So like get out hot and then do tens with kind of linear rests. He did say, though, he was a little sore and beat up from, uh, he did the cut one and cut two workouts on Wednesday, and then on Saturday or on Friday, he did a bunch of other workouts that, that were games tests, and then went into this. Yeah, so he did 10, I don't know exact break, but it was pretty quick, and then I just counted there, and it was four seconds, so he's trying with the 10 linear break strategy. Right. I, I think for really, for anyone, it really does come at, down to the management of your rest breaks here. Movement speed does play a role if you're like a world-class athlete and yeah. you can do these 60 with, you know, in like two or three sets and not be affected. But for almost everybody else, you're gonna get to the point, like he's already down, like if he was planning on tens, he's already down to smaller sets. And I remember as he gets closer to the end of this, he gets- Threes and twos. Yeah, and he kinda, it looks like he's almost failing to get his toes to the bar. So when, the, when it's that dense leading in, it's about managing and limiting your rest breaks however you have to do that. I generally recommend people because it's one movement and the same muscle groups getting taxed over and over and over again, I almost feel like it's better off to take a bigger chunk and then slowly lower the amount of work that you're doing per set, but try to keep the rest break linear, as right. opposed to thinking that the work is linear across. I think it, you know, it, it, everybody kind of can empathize with this. 
no matter what, there's kind of that threshold number. So yeah. whether you break it up a ton or whether you do one big set, it may be like 40 toes of bar and then you're already having yeah. to break no matter what. So I agree with you. I think that's probably a better strategy. Uh, what he did a good job of though was being okay with going from his original strategy of tens down to fives, then yeah. down to threes, so he could keep moving. And that's just somebody who's good at racing. Yeah. I mean, I definitely don't have that skill super refined. <laughs> <laughs> I start to break down and None just do. yeah, I get frustrated. Yeah. But if you're used to racing and used to being at your threshold, you just figure out in the race, okay, now I need to make this adjustment. Yeah. So it's 50 bar facing burpees. One of the things that we worked on before when they were prepping for regionals uh, the year before last was actually working on his burpee speed because as enduring as he was, he wasn't really quick off the ground. He's gotten better at that, but you notice here one of the things we corrected after this workout was him standing up all the way on every single rep. There's a couple options, right? You can go fast and then slow down, go fast, slow down. He tried to keep kind of the same pace, which that means you have to stand up a little bit. Yeah. But I like to see him, because he can breathe in that hinge position, to stay a little bit lower. It just kind of cuts off a quarter of a second or half a second of rep, which plays a big role if you're going in a qualifier-style workout yeah, against over 50 of reps, people. half a yeah. second is 25 seconds right. of work, which in a Metcon in the open is, what, thousands yeah, of places? For sure, for um, sure. So even for somebody like, you know, for me, I don't have the body weight endurance to be able to push after toes to bar to push 50 burpees at a linear speed and stay low. But I can move, stay low and move fast for a period of them. So there's ways of trying to break it up and manage your body to go through something like this. So I did 10 and then I took a break and then I did 10. Whereas that time that it took me to complete the 50 reps probably would have been the same if I just went slow and continuous and grindy for 50 reps. But in order to stay fresh enough to do this work that's after it, that just is a better strategy for me. Yeah. For him, it wouldn't be, 10 and break, but it might be five fast, five at this pace, five fast, or something like that. Right. Some sort of strategy to take advantage of the fact that he does have that engine. Yeah, I think the big takeaway for anybody watching this is you gotta kinda find what pace is gonna work for you, and there are quite a few strategies on burpees, but you wanna find the, time, the, the pace that's going to minimize the time, right? Yeah. And so for me, what I did was 10 fast, 10 slow, 10 fast, 10 slow, 10 fast. I just liked that rhythm, and I could still keep continuous burpees, but my 10 fast were like, 12 to 14 seconds for yeah. 10, and then I would slow it down to 25 seconds for 10, but it allowed me to get done with the burpees pretty fast. Yeah, Something that I noticed with Joey, like especially on that rep that just passed, he kind of hopped up to two feet and then took an extra step, and his footwork is changing like that yeah, right there. Yeah, it, it gets really sloppy. So for some, uh, for standards, sometimes when you do that, it's it doesn't look like you're jumping off of two feet, so you gotta be careful. His are pretty good, so I wouldn't really take that into consideration. But those extra steps, and then jumping over the bar and staying oriented in one direction as opposed to turning around, those are the little details that separate somebody who's a really successful sanctional athlete, sanctional level athlete like Joey, from a really successful games athlete, yep. is that those extra you know, four steps that you take over the course of two burpees is extra time that's just being wasted and you're not really saving work. So it's definitely something to take into consideration is just pay attention to your footwork and make sure that it's the same as much as you possibly can, no matter how much fatigue you're under. Yeah, for the first 40, he did a really good job of that. It's something we talked about before the workout, and then we talked about it again after. I think just finding the same rhythm the entire time, obviously, is the most efficient way to do that. So something that he's working on, and that's something that all of you at home can work on as well. Keep the same footwork, or even switch the, the leg that you go up with halfway. So maybe it's left steps yeah. for the first 25, and then right steps for the next 25 if you got one leg that blows up. So he started with fives here. I'm pretty sure he goes fives the entire way until maybe the last 10 and then breaks him up even more. I like that strategy for him. Uh, he's not a great puller off the ground. And so he has to manage these deadlifts a little bit more than maybe you know a Travis or, or something like that that can do 25 unbroken. Yeah, yeah you can kind of see like, you know, positionally that he's not in like what you would call optimal pull position. He's got a little bit of lumbar flexion. I don't know where that arm recoil comes from because his eccentric's not super fast. It doesn't look like he's bouncing it, but maybe he's just getting pulled forward a little bit and has to bend his arm to kind of keep it close to his center of gravity. But all those little things I think play a role. And then as an athlete, you figure out like, okay, this is my technique. This is what 
I can default into, this is what I can race with, now how do I manage it to go as fast as I can? So for somebody like him, this is obviously taxing for him, hands on his knees like he's obviously tired, but he's figuring out how to just chunk the work small and keep the rest breaks manageable under that tension. Yeah, this is just, again, a good example of someone that knows how to race in the sport. So this is a really tough movement for him, but you'll notice his rest breaks are staying pretty linear and he's keeping those small uh, work times where it's just basically, I'm gonna do five reps as fast as I can, five second reps, five, and it slows down a little bit, but I still think he handled this relatively well. Yeah, I noticed, so he did it, and then I judged Tyler after this, um, wrapping the grips underneath the bar. I don't know if it's like a you know a way to save your. Hands he says from it helps. Gripping, he or, says it helps yeah. with the grip. So yeah. like I mean, it I would be like on the bar, but yeah, the pull up bar. Yeah, yeah. I might start playing with it, but also something probably not to rely on in case somebody says, "Oh, this is uncommon movement standards. You can't do it. You don't yeah. want to train all the time like that." But it might be something to take into consideration in a grip limited workout in the future. So I think this part, as we're moving in, is all about the standard. This standard, the year that they put it in the open, caused a lot of uh, people to get a ton of no reps, and then when we put it in here, it did as well. I think because A, it's just a tough standard, and B, it's like a midline taxing workout movement, a midline taxing movement, a midline taxing movement, and then you have to go upside <coughs> down, and your body line just gets broken. Yeah. So it's tough to stay straight. Yeah, Joey's 50 strict for time is like 130, to give everybody an idea. And this takes him, I mean, I bet you it's two and a half, three minutes to do 30 strict handstand push-ups. So I say that just so that you know what to expect when you get there. I think even people that have really good strict handstand push-ups are going to get blown up just from the other things that happen in the workout. And then the standard that, you know, even on the first couple reps, his judge was like, all right, make sure you get over the line. So he's having to press out a little bit more than maybe he's used to in training. Yeah. And it messes your timing and rhythm up. Yeah, you holding see at even the top. Just holding. So this is a, definitely a good thing to practice. It might not be the standard at any competition ever again, but just having the variability to know if you show up to a competition and it does change the standard and you're super practiced and good with one strategy, you end up getting screwed because you don't know how to just like be an athlete and figure it out. Yes. So in your training, make sure that you're doing quite a few different standards. Yeah. Maybe it's just the box standard. Maybe it's the arm length that they did a couple years yeah. ago where it's elbow to wrist. Maybe it's this standard. Uh, all of those should be practiced to make sure that you're efficient at each one. And it could just be in warm-ups. Like yeah, just for do a sure. couple reps at each one of the standards and make sure you're comfortable like manipulating it. Um, in hindsight, now that you've seen him Oh, see you in the background doing yeah. some devs warm warming up. I was warming yeah. up to beat yeah. you. <laughs> you should be warming up to beat Joey. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think that he mismanaged his pace if these handstand push-ups took longer or just the no, movement combo? I, yeah, I, I think the movement combo. And then, you know, he we talked. He's a very realistic athlete, and he, he doesn't get soft on these kind of workouts. So I, he told me beforehand, the point is, I'm pretty sore and beat up from doing Mary yesterday. My lats are really torn up, too. So... I don't know how hard I can go on this. Uh, he still pushed. I mean, he got the best score of anybody on site. I Except think. <laughs> I don't count. Uh, I, had, I didn't have a judge, so, so Mike said that I cheated. <laughs> um, but the I think for him, he probably could have you know maybe sped these up by thirty or forty five seconds. Yeah. I was surprised he did ten or five. I thought he was going to do ten, ten, ten. But it was over two minutes for him yeah. to finish those. Yeah. Also, you notice it. Um, you can rewind it back or just um, take my word for it. There were a couple reps where he's pushing up and his toes are pointed. And generally, like when people handstand, they go into that pointed toe yeah. position. But in order to meet this standard and make it really clear that your heels are above the line, you almost have to dorsiflex have at to. the top. And you see, like, I think his second to last rep, his toes are planted, and then he has to dorsiflex them really aggressively, and then he keeps them dorsiflex. So I think just make sure you pull your toes down at the top of every rep, um, just to make sure that your body is tight as possible and your heels are as high as you can possibly get them. The other thing you should practice is your hand distance from the wall. Yeah. The, the closer you are, the easier it is, although that may mess some people up based yeah. on just their head position. So. Yeah, and it's also tough too, if you're close to the wall, you sometimes just push yourself off yes. if you don't have a good body His line. shoulder position is good enough. That's something that we've practiced a lot is working on getting closer and closer to the wall. And that's kind of something that he does in his warmups too. It's like, hey, do some far away, do some closer, do some really wide. Because if there's not a standard, he could just widen his hands out as much as he wants and do 50 yeah. really fast. So his strategy at this point, I'm assuming, is just get as many as he can. No, you know, just right. stay on the bar as much as possible. But he's got to be pretty wrecked because he's still doing small sets. He said his grip was pretty blown up from this uh, as well. So. Choose. Yeah. This is a, so if you're in a competition, you can't really do this, but if you're in the open, 
um, there are like this low bar that you see to his his right or our left on the screen if you're looking at it is lower and you can get a ton of reps just doing swinging singles and yeah, spinning Jason around Kalipa each did time. That. I don't know what year it was. It was the clean and jerk toe to bar year. Yeah. I mean, he did singles on like the 15s, 18s, and 21s and that. And, and he, still crushed yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So um, obviously from a qualifier perspective, having the ability to like deviate that way is helpful. But if you're practicing for in-person competition or he's demoing for us, he's not going to do that. But it's just something to take into consideration. Um, so there it was. 27 toes to bar in the second round. That'll be hard to beat. All right, let's go look at the rest of the scores. All right, so you just watched Joey go. He was our top male scorer with 207 reps. Tyler was 193, and Cannon was our third best scorer with 177. 180 reps was the completion of all of the work in one full round and ending the handstand push-ups. So obviously we had two males that finish. On the female side, Ali set the top score with 201. Mia was 168 reps, which is 18 handstand push-ups, and Brooke with 165, which is 15 handstand push-ups. If you're about to do throwdown number 14, we wanted to give you guys a couple quick tips. The first movement is toes to bar. The way that we look at this is to start with one big set, make sure you don't go to failure, and then keep linear rest times, and then your working set should be descending based on how you feel for the movement. Second movement is burpees. I think the number one thing that you should pay attention to is your footwork and the rotation as you're jumping over the bar. Then pick a strategy for yourself that allows you to manage your total time in that segment while also making sure that you're fresh enough to be able to attack the deadlifts when you move to that movement. For the deadlifts, I think there's two ways to go about it. If you're a really good puller and you have good endurance, you can do one big set, take a short rest, and then try to do a 10 and a 10 to finish, or a 10, 5, 5. If you are somebody that's not great at pulling, then you want to do this like the toes to bar. Keep your rest breaks short, try to keep them linear across, and then do short, small sets. Cool. And then the last movement is strict handstand push-ups. That one is going to be primarily dictated by your ability in that movement. But with this standard, make sure that you're paying attention to the distance you are away from the wall, your body line, and then dorsiflexing your feet at the top of the reps to make sure that they all count. So that's all our tips for the week. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Good luck on the workout. We'll see you next week. You can check out the design at trainingthinktank.com. It's a wrap, you know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Pata in this thing, man. Hey, look, man, thank y'all for watching Training Think Tank YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel, you know what I'm saying? Hit that motherfucking subscribe button. Let it be known what it be known what it be known, you know what I'm saying? Pata.